physics. The natural science that studies matter and its motion and behavior through space and time and that studies the related entities of energy and force. Today, throughout the duration of this video, we will be dissecting a clear-cut example of how physics contribute to our everyday world and play a key role in everything we do. Our video features Carter, a recent Stanford graduate with the world in his eyes and a chip on his shoulder, demonstrating how physics is heavily intertwined with basketball to a fresh young Harvard undergrad who goes by the name Thomas. Together, the two team up to unlock the secrets behind becoming a Division I NCAA basketball player and change the game forever. And with that, the two ventured off to theorize new physics concepts together. Unbeknownst to them, they would change the way basketball was played forever. Gee, can you teach me how to throw a basketball such as yourself with these equations You know here? what? I can do that for you, man. Anything for you, man. I'm actually a Stanford grad, number one in my class, so... Oh, but then Harvard the man. Oh, Harvard man. Oh, wow, very nice, very nice. I'd like to see another man of intelligence in here. Anyway, here we have a very nice arrangement of equations that run through my head at approximately 1.45 seconds every time before I throw the basketball. I'm curious about this one here. But yeah, of course, the first thing I like to do in any situation when throwing a basketball is I like to calculate the velocity in the x direction. Now this is v, v x naught, which means it's the, like, the initial velocity. Right. Since x in the x direction, velocity is constant, we just assume this is v x. In order to solve for v x, I need the time it takes for the basketball to travel to the hoop and the total distance it travels. Now since I'm kind of like a genius, right, I like to throw the basketball first and it can calculate the exact time it took in my head. And I like to walk and measure the exact distance between my current position and the hoop so I can calculate that. Vx with relative ease. Right, okay. You talked about the x direction. You mind breaking down the y velocity for me? Well, yeah, sure. The y velocity, that kind of my opinion, is easier than the x direction. Oh, really? So first and foremost, we just got to address the fact that Vy0 in our case is going to go to zero because we're not throwing the ball at all. Oh, okay. Yep. Next, we're going to uh, talk about G. G is actually really interesting. That's kind of like the acceleration of the ball. And since we're, you know, uh, there's gravity, the ball is going to be gravitating down. Negative 9.8 meters a second. So G is going to be with a negative 9.8. Oh, okay. And T in this case is going to be the same thing as T was in this case. So we're just going to be multiplying 9.8 times T. And that's going to give us the velocity in the y direction. And the reason it's negative is because it's pushing it downwards. Is that exactly, right? exactly. Good job. So Harvard man, I'm really glad you knew that. You know, I didn't think Harvard people do that. Oh, I do. Oh, fantastic. Velocities. Yep. We need one more thing. We need the angle. And you know, when you throw a basketball, you throw it at an angle. So how do we calculate that? Well, it's actually really easy. I'm surprised you didn't know that you go Harvard and stuff. Um, anyway, as you can see in my work equations, theta is equal to tangent mega velocity inverse tangent. Y over Vx. Oh, those are the two values we calculated? We already calculated Vy over Vx. So it's as simple as 1, 2, 3. It's as simple as plug it in Vy right. and then put it in Vx. What that to do, okay. you know, your brain calculator, of course, as you go to Harvard, you have a brain calculator like I do Stanford. It's easy. Um, and we can calculate the exact angle when you throw the basketball. Okay, cool. Now, what's also very interesting is that as, you know, Ivy Leaguers, I'm not an Ivy League, I go to Stanford, which is better than Ivy But anyway, you throw it at an angle. And you have an internalized protractor. Right. So you can calculate the exact angle of throw it Okay. By applying this equation. With this equation, you get the exact angle. How does anyone miss a basketball shot? I don't know. It's really easy. It's just all physics. It's all 2D kinematics. After the two discussed their formulas, they decided to go into the sports lab and try them out with expert analysis. The results they achieved were astounding. Through experimentation, they found that the distance from the three-point line to the basket was 23.75 feet, or in normal terms, 7.239 meters. They also found the height of the basketball hoop to be 3.048 meters above the ground, and the height of the basketball in the person who's throwing a hand 1.5 meters above the ground. They decided to keep consistently throughout each shot, they would throw the ball on a 45 degree angle, giving the ball enough loft to make it to the basket with a relative ease. Next, they needed to find exactly how hard they needed to throw the ball. This is the tricky part. In order to do this, they first broke down the horizontal and vertical initial velocities. 
The initial velocity in the x, or the horizontal direction, is the initial velocity multiplied by the cosine of 45. Next, they solved for t using kinematic equations. By plugging in what they knew, they found that t was equal to the distance from the hoop divided by the initial velocity, or 7.239 divided by 0.707 v0. In an effort to further solve for the velocity needed to throw the ball, they plugged in the value of t to another kinematic equation, but this one is used to calculate the variables in the y direction. Since they know the height of the hoop is 3.048 meters, and the height of the basketball in the hand of the thrower is 1.5 meters, delta y and y0 can be filled in. They also knew the value of gravity to be equal to negative 9.8 meters a second because it is always directing force downward. Next, all it takes is using algebra to solve for the initial velocity. When multiplying v y0 and t, 0.707 v0 cancels out, leaving 8.739 remaining, which can be subtracted from their delta y value. After completing this step, they are left with the equation negative 5.691 equals 1 half times negative 9.8 times 7.239 over 0.707 v0 squared. By further solving for v0, they eventually came to the conclusion that the velocity needed to throw the ball for it to reach the hoop is 9.561 meters per second exactly. The two set off on using their new mathematical formulas to exploit the game of basketball. This is actual footage from the first real world test. Thanks so much for teaching me the applied physics of 2D kinematics. I'm now going to take the shot and see if I can make it using what you've taught me. The problem man, is what I do. It's what I do. As you can see, the equations used completely destroy any competitive aspect to the game and will certainly turn basketball into a joke of a sport. This has been the story of Carter and Thomas, the two men known today as the destroyers of basketball.